are to recognize your humanness. It's good to be in reality. Yeah. It, it really is. To me, Sister Betty Brown, most of what was going on in church was kind of like fantasy world. Yeah. And poll, you poll women. Oh, my goodness. They treated you like you were fifth-class citizens, but they expected you to perform as superwomen. They expected you to put up with everything, anything. Husband could treat you any kind of way, he could do all whatever he wanted to do, and you were supposed to just smile, thank the Lord, and go on. And, you know, I just, I thank the Lord for uh, reformation. I thank the Lord for him hearing the cry of his people. One thing about it is, Tara, everybody want to be treated well. I, I don't care who, who that you are. And God, Jesus said at one time, he said, I came that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. And so... Even though there is a blessing in the storm, our life is not supposed to be a veil of tears. Uh, there's that, P Peter talks about joy unspeakable and full of glory. And I want you to know that on this side, I'm not talking, before you get to heaven, that, that God gives us a wonderful life. He gives us a wonderful life. And what's so wonderful about it, Robert, is not, we have been taught, I want you to get the book of Colossians, please. We have been taught that come to church, you pray, you read your Bible, you fast, and you listen to the pastor, and the pastor is going to teach you how to have a better life. Funny thing about it, Tari, is we found out that the pastor didn't know how to have a better life. We started, you know, he, he, he portrayed a life to us. And a lot of it had to do with the outward appearance. Yeah, he, he had the sharpest suit, of course, because he was taking all your money. And so he, he, he and then he would sometimes would tell you about the places that he visited. He then went here and went there, and you should go there one day. Well, you know, you're going on my money. If I wasn't giving you my money, I could go too. <sighs> if you don't hear anything else that I have to say tonight, consider this. God does not want us to give him our life. God does not want us to learn how to live a better life, how to not lie, how to not steal, how to not uh, commit adultery, how to not bear false witness, how to not defraud your neighbor. It is not the purpose to come to church to be taught how to be a better person. I promise you, I thought that's what church was about. Because I would hear sometimes, you know, she, he doesn't join church. He doesn't join church. He go over there, he's at Second Baptist. He, he's, he's at, and Lord have mercy, if they say, oh, yeah, he at the sanctified church now. We, we know that he pure from the head down to the top, to the bottom. The grand old church of God in Christ. That's what I belong, I belong to, the sanctified church. None of that, beloved, will help you. Who your pastor is, what I'm teaching you, I can teach you. You might wonder sometimes how it is that you know pastor is teaching the word of God. He is breaking it down. He's explaining it. Why aren't the people doing any better? with all of the teaching. Well, the reason is, is because we're in Colossians. Let's go to Colossians 3. I think the Bible can say it better than I can say it. This is 
the great mystery of why the church or why we are like we are. Because out of all that we've been taught, shouldn't we be something else beside what we are? Colossians 3 and 1 says, if you then be risen with Christ. Can you get a little, a little volume of this? Usually it's a, just a little bit. If you then, that's good right there. If you then be risen with Christ. What is the Bible talking about if he says that? says that I rose with Christ. Uh, how, many, how, many, how many of y'all came to church with somebody? Y'all did? Y'all, y'all came in together. Y'all rose <laughs> Okay, so y'all rode together. Wherever one was, the rest of them were. And the reason is, it's because you were riding in the same vehicle, but you, and you arrived together. You left together, and you arrived together. Well, the Bible says that we are supposed to have been risen with Christ. What does he mean by risen with Christ? We're in Colossians 3 and 1. Let's go to Ephesians 2. If you then be risen with Christ. <clears throat> now, the Bible also tells us in at least three places, in a backup in Ephesians and in Galatians, that the just shall live by faith. Frat, in Hebrews, the Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. So then, We do not please God with our behavior. That's what we've been taught. That's what we've been taught all our life. Uh, They sing a song where I come from, say, uh, the reason I'm living right, I don't want to be lost. The reason I'm praying, so I don't want to be lost. Now, all of that seems to make sense, doesn't it? Because if you're on a job and you don't show up on the job and you don't stay there, you ever, you, you ever had a chick? So I know y'all got the big time job now, but back when we just had a regular job, Frat, when I worked on the slab field, and you mess around and missed a day or two, what they call it, your chick be shocked. Oh, okay, okay. I, I thought I was talking to the right folk. Your chick be shocked. I know y'all don't know about that now because they got covered and you got the annual leave and all this right here. And, so you don't have to worry about it. But back before we had all those benefits, if you weren't, didn't work, then your check was shout. And nobody don't like no shout check. Isn't that right? So then that made sense. So we applied that to God. If we did this and we did that, then our check wouldn't be shout. Then God would accept us. Then God would love us. Then God would take care of us. You, you see, I even deal with people who come to me and tell me people who have had their children killed, children, something happened to the children, and church people will come to them and say, see, if you had been paying your tithes, your child wouldn't have got killed. I, 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 it's very cruel. It's very, very cruel. I don't know what it feels like to lose a child. You see, I know you do, Jackie. I know you do. I I know this right here. I believe it ain't nothing to play with. And and I believe that. And and I never try to speak on nothing I don't know about Lady Deborah. My mom's still living. She's she's, she's sitting where I I think she is. Yeah, my my mama's still living. (laughs) And when Lady Deborah started talking about her mother, her mother passed December 16th. When she started talking about, I'm quiet. I'm the pastor. I'm, I'm the head of the house over there and all that. But when she goes talking about that, I'm quiet. Okay? So then, by faith, I have to take the word of God is not the word of God to anyone except the ones who believe it. He that come to God must believe that he is and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. So, Cynthia, I never try to prove anything to people. I never try to prove God to anyone. You must believe that God is in order for any of this to make any sense, for any of this. People start ridiculing. Well, how is this right here? How can this right here? And whatever and everything. I said, well, it's not unless you believe it. 
he that cometh to God must believe. And God is so confident of himself. He knows who he is. He knows what he's done. He knows that the whole world, it just, it consists and, and it stays. The sun comes, the moon goes down. Don't nothing move without him. He, he knows that. And so God does not have to prove himself to any of us. We have to come to the end of our self and our own self-efforts to finally allow God to give us faith to believe. And once that we believe, then we know. And you can't show anybody else. You can't prove it to anybody else. Uh, the Bible says, and you have he quickened who are dead in your trespasses and sin, uh, wherein in time past you walked according to this world, according to the prince of the power, the, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, uh, uh, the children of unbelief. That word disobedience in the Greek is apithia, which simply means unbelief. When you are in unbelief, you are in disobedience. Ain't nothing you, only person, only thing can help you is God. I don't care who you are, I don't care how much money you got. Have you just noticed the tragedy of people's lives? The tragedy of people's lives? All of us would have looked at Bill Cosby and thought, oh my God, he is a success. You don't think so now, do you? You, you don't think so now. You don't want to be him. You don't want to be R. Kelly. You don't want to be any of these people, no matter how much money, no matter how much fame they have, because they were living in disobedience. They were living according. So let me tell you something. God can crucify any appetite any man ever had, whether it's for cigarettes, whether it's for, for lust, whether it's for, for whatever it is that you, that has you, you see, and when something have you, you can't say how far it's going to go. But all of us think that we can handle it. All of us think that, well, I'm not going to go as far as the since you go. But the thing about it is, is that all of this, you mess around and get hold of something. You're playing. You start off playing. And you're playing with something that, that, that ha it has a life of its own. And so... The Bible says, but God was rich in his mercy and his love, even when we were dead in sins, quickened us together with Christ. Let's go back to what we said in Colossians 3 and 1. If you be risen with Christ, go back to the example of people who rode here together. Uh, it wasn't but one person, Jack, it was three of y'all, but one but one person driving. But all three of y'all got here. All three of you left and all three of you got here. Everybody don't have to drive in order for you to get here. That's a great lesson for human beings. Everybody don't have to be the head. Everybody don't have to be the head. You see? God don't make everybody the head. There the, some people the leader, but all three of y'all, everybody benefited. All three of y'all, nobody got anything special because they was driving the car. But all three of you got here. But you had to get in the car. You had to make a decision that I'm going to get in here and I'm going where you're going. And so then Paul tells us in Colossians the third one, third, third verse and third chapter in the first verse, he said, if you be risen with Christ. Wonder why it is that we were not taught about being risen with Christ. It's in the Bible. And they brag about, I preach the Bible. I'm preaching the Bible. But what you, what you preached to me the whole time was, is how I was supposed to act. You put the ball back in my court. And you see, the thing about it is, it's not a human being living that doesn't fail. Every one of us is just like Paul, what we said we're not going to do. You see? And that's the reason that God uh, instituted love. Because it takes love to keep us together. It's not a person that's married that ain't done something to, that would destroy a marriage. That haven't said something that would destroy a marriage. You see? But the thing about it, love. If you love someone, and I use for better example, our children, our children do some things that if we didn't love them, we wouldn't fool with them but <laughs> You see what I'm saying? We done bent over backwards. You ever tried to help your children and do something? 
So if you, you okay, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come down there and I'm gonna help you. And it's at, you know, it's at seven o'clock. I had to get up out to bed early in order to help you. And I get there and you ain't even there. That's love. That's love. So he says, even when we were dead, he quickened us together with Christ. In other words, he made us alive. Now, watch this right here. When you got up, you did not get up in the same state that you were down. Go back to the example of riding together with him. Okay, you were uh, at another part of West Helena, but then now you end up in this part of West Helena. And you, you got there simply by virtue of the fact that you got in the car with somebody that was going somewhere. Okay? So then, you could not get up in the dead state. In that dead state, dead in your trespassing sin. What does he mean by dead? Remember the last two or three weeks we've been talking about when man sinned, he, he died, he died spiritually. What do you mean by died spiritually? That part of man that knows God died. That part of man that cared about God died. Do you remember when you were quickened? Do you remember when it became important to you about God? You wasn't always, you didn't always care. You cared about what time the club opened. You cared about what folks said about you. You cared about what the brand new, what this and the what you did. And that's the reason that pastors don't have a hard time pastoring because you can't make nobody care about what they don't care about. These folks don't care. It's, it's like trying to get mad at a duck because he don't want to fly a plane. I'm a duck. I got wings. I'm going to fly on these wings. I don't want to fly no plane. You, you frustrate yourself. But when he quickened you, when he quickened you, you watch this right here. You watch this. If we live and we're around long enough, uh, some of the people that don't come to Bible study, some of the people that don't come to Sunday school, you're going to see them start coming. It didn't have nothing to do with pastor. didn't have nothing to do with you. God quickened them. God quickened them. See, it takes God to do this for us. Pastor can't do it. The church can't do it. We can't buy enough hot dogs. We can't make the program. With it. We, can't, we can't put in a new carpet or whatever. Don't nobody care nothing about that. But when God quickened you, and the reason that you are able to be quickened is, is because he got up. He quickens you together. You get the benefit of what Jesus did. And therefore, you have no reason to ever talk about yourself. Because you were dead. But he gave you the benefit. Whoever drove y'all over, uh, over here, uh, you got the benefit of his efforts and his driving. You ain't do nothing to get here. All you did was got in. That's all you did. And that's all that we do is when God quickened us to get with him. Not that we are giving him anything, not that we are doing anything for him or anything, but I believe that you know where you're going and I'm getting in the car with you and I'm going. And sure enough, when you got in the car with him, you ended up where he was going. And so he says, even when we were dead, not to express God, God, it, who is rich in his mercy. He didn't have to do it. Nothing about us. Nothing. About, when we were, he quickened us together with Christ. Look what, and then in parentheses, he says it, Robert, and he mentions this over and over again. But we don't get it. I need to be here tonight because some keep telling me that I'm great. Some keep telling me, look what you did. Some keep telling me, some keep making me want to compare myself with you. Oh, I'm doing so much better than what you call. I don't do this right now. I don't smoke cigarettes. I don't cuss. I don't do this right here uh, and everything. You know, and they got this bad in church right here. I've been married to the same woman for 50 years. But yeah, but yeah, you sleep in one room, she sleep in the other. It's, it's more to her uh, goodness than yours and everything. You got two children across. Thank you, Jesus. We want, we want, we want some credit. Sometimes I go to church at other places and everything. Lady Deborah and I leave and we just look at each other and say, they ain't said nothing about Jesus yet. 
Satan is tricky. Satan is tricky, and Satan wants to keep your eyes on you. Why do you want to keep your eyes on you? Because he wants to keep you defeated. Because Paul says in Romans 7, 18, I promise y'all, I was preaching 25 years before God uh, brought me over here. I never can remember seeing the scripture where it says in Romans 7, 18, Paul says, I know that in me, that he is in my flesh, do I let no good thing. Yeah. That, you, know, you know what? That would change the whole attitude and direction of the church because then we will start allowing our real life, yeah. which is Christ, to live through us instead of all our programs and all this. Every Sunday, y'all got a program. Every Sunday. Every other week, y'all got a revival. We need reviving. But you need, Christ don't need reviving. I'm dead. I am dead. And my life now is Christ in me. The hope of glory. Anytime, Brother Alex, that I start leading me, and it happens, I can identify when Vandal in charge. I can identify. How can you identify? Give me 1 Corinthians uh, 13th chapter. I, I, I know how to spot him. You see... <laughs> You can't do nothing with nothing that you can't do anything with something that you can't identify. Identify. Self confidence is killing people every day. Why would I allow God when I got it? Why would I allow? Now I, I don't know. I'm I'm not the kind of person. I I I've never been the kind of person. Uh, a, a, a pimp. You got guys now that they want women to buy them clothes, women to do this and what. I wasn't raised like that. My mama raised me and everything. She said, don't, don't let no woman do nothing for you. Because you know, once people start doing stuff for you, they think they own you. And so I, I don't try to be funny, but I don't, uh -uh. I'd rather do without. Uh, uh, uh. First Corinthians 3 and 1. Look at chap. Look at uh, look at look at uh, uh ver I mean chapter thirteen. First Corinthians chapter thirteen. I'm sorry. We in three. This is how I know when it's me, and this is when I know when it's God. Thirteen verse uh, four. Here the Bible says charity, a love. Now, do you remember the, the 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 verse in the Bible that says God is love? Now. Y'all have to keep it simple for me. I ain't deep. I'm not getting all into the, the starry crowns and what's up under the, the throne and all that stuff. That, that, that's for y'all deep folk. Verse 4 said, charity suffereth long. I know what that means. That ain't none of me. I get tired of you real quick. You said you need a ride. Walmart. Okay. I'm a good Christian man. I pass the church. I love the Lord. I love you. Come on. We go on to Walmart. On the way to Walmart, you say you need to stop by Sister Cynthia's house. <laughs> My lip go to quivering. Okay. I stopped you by Sister Cynthia's house. Then we go to Walmart. You say you're going into Walmart to get certain things, but I'm looking at my watch and everything. That would have been an hour. Now all of a sudden, family come out, and in my mind, it start out with this. <laughs> That's me. That's me. I know that right there helped me to see me. And if I can't see this, I feel justified with it. Because instead of looking at me, I start looking at you. How are you going to ask me to go and everything? I'm, I'll take out of my time. My guess, I ain't asking you for nothing. Now here you are. You're, just, you're taking advantage of them. You're trying to run over with me. I ain't no punk. I ain't no sister. You ain't going to just run over with me. I bet you one thing. This is the last thing, bitch. Okay. 
That's me. That's, that's me. But God yeah. suffers long. When the Spirit, and that's when the Bible said, it said, said, said walk in the Spirit. Yeah. See, the Bible ain't just saying things. And what I found out is he's trying to make it light on me. Because when I let you get me all worked up like that, man, I'm messed up. I'm messed up. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to control some person, place, or thing. I'm trying to make you act like I want you to act. And I can't have no peace whatsoever because I've been living long enough for to know that the more I want you to act, the more you act the other way. I ain't got no peace. None whatsoever. Charity, love, suffers long. And it's kind. And it's kind. And it's kind. What that means is, is that I don't have no picks and chooses. What that means is, is that when I see a, 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 a jacket, I'm just grinning and, and what that's showing all my teeth and whatever. But here what comes somebody that I don't like, like I like jacket and everything, and I'm just looking up at them upside the head, buying the fault. See, kind is when you do something you don't have to do. Kind ain't when you, I gave you $100, now you finna give me $100. That's not kind. But kind is when you can look past how a person's look. Kind is when I go over to my neighbor's house and I tell them, you invited just like the church folks are invited. You stay over here by me. I'm being kind. That's God. That ain't none of me. But me, I got my pick and choose it. And so he said, charity is, is love is kind. It envieth not. It boneth not itself up. Is not puffed up. Does not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easy to perfect, uh, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth no, not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in true, beareth all things, but hope that endureth all things. There's a part in the New Living Translation that always get me, friend, and that is what the Bible says, that love keeps no record of the evil that's done to it. Oh, my God. Man, I, I'm telling you what, I had that knee-jerk thing. I'm finna cut you off. You don't have to worry about it no more. I'm through with you. But the Bible says that when God's spirit is working through you, you are not allowed to keep any record of the wrong that's done. Go back, where, where, where we're back. Go back to Ephesians there where it talks about will you be risen with him. Ephesians 2 should be about. Uh, even when we were dead, I'm at verse 5, have quickened us together with Christ. Lady Deborah, I must always understand that I am crucified with Christ. Give me that. That's Galatians 6. Give me that. You see how all these scriptures just, just fit together, that the Bible doesn't contradict itself? Uh, scripture, you don't need a commentary that the scripture will define itself. You don't need a man's viewpoint. Uh, I think it's down at the end of chapter 6. Is that where it says, I've been crucified with Christ, Deborah? Where is it, y'all? Y'all help me. We in my, I'm in my 17th year. When I was in my 7th year, I could tell y'all. <laughs> Robert is so glad. Robert said, man, I'm so glad you don't go on and forgetting. I thought, well, the way you and Deborah be getting them scriptures, I thought y'all didn't never forget nothing. You know, caught up with me too, Robert. Anybody know where? We can't find it. Just go, go, go to the end of Galatians 6, and I, I'll go from there. And I, You know it's in the Bible. You find it yourself. But Paul says, for I am crucified with Christ, yet nevertheless I live. But the life that I live, I live by the Son of God who died for me. Now, down in Galatians 6, Paul says, 
I was right there. She moved uh, back, go back up to maybe 11. I'm sorry. Verse 7 is fine. Here Paul says, don't be deceived. Now look, when you are operating in the flesh, it always looks better, y'all. The spirit make you look foolish. It always looks best, better when you're in the flesh. I asked the lady the other day because she had on that, you know, sanctified uniform. You know what they wear. They wear, they wear the uh, blue jean dress and, you know, hair ain't fixed and I just got it back. I said, what church you belong to? We go to church on Saturday. Now, I don't think that's what I asked her. But I get it that that's what she's proud of. We go to church on Saturday. We keep the Sabbath. Y'all don't, you see. But God, Jesus is my wisdom. And in order for to put her at ease, I said, well, that makes sense. I told Lady Deborah, when I said that, it was like she turned into a whole other person with the smile and grinning and everything, you see. Uh, but that is her claim to fame, what she does. We do this, we don't do that. You see how... Satan has deceived you where you don't give God his praise and his glory for who he is, for he is our life. Now, I said Galatians 6 and 7, didn't I? But give me 2 Corinthians 4 and 4. Robert, I still can remember some of them. Galatians 2 and 20. Thank you, dog. Uh, go to, give me 3. Galatians, uh, okay. Here, 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 2 Corinthians 2, uh, I mean 4 and 3. Here, the, here Paul says, but if our gospel be hid, and the gospel is hid, y'all. The gospel is hid. They think the gospel is, is the harder, high, the more you holler and tell folks, leave that woman husband alone. Stay up out of that club. Yeah, don't, don't be over that casino. That's not the gospel. The gospel is, Paul says, I declare unto you that which I received, the gospel, how that Christ died for our sins, was buried, and was resurrected on the third day. That's the gospel. The good news is, is that just like y'all three came together, the good news is somebody is going to church, and if you get in the car, you can go as well. The good news is, is that Christ died to reconcile man back unto God. And if you catch a ride, Tara, you can be reconciled as well. You have to give up your life on the cross with him. You have to join him on the cross. You have to give up having confidence in your abilities, in your money, in your knowledge, and you have to die on the cross with him, be buried with him, but God will quicken you together. He will justify you with Christ so that he that knew no sin, became, I'm preaching right now, he that knew no sin became sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. In Christ. Not anything in us. In Christ, in him. If, but if it's hid, it's hid to them that are lost. How did it get hid? That the God, the little G of this world. Now, I'm, I'm, get, I'm getting ready to pull the sheets back. You finna see something if you, you might not have ever seen. That is why that there are people that don't go to church they got more sense than the folks they're going to church. That's why you got folks that don't dot nobody's door. That know better how to treat folk than folks that's in church every day. Because the God, the little G, he operates in these assemblies. They're cliquish. We believe Ain't no such thing as what we believe. Y'all don't be in the same house, y'all don't believe the same thing. That, that, that's, that's an illusion. And uh, we, are, we up in here, we don't believe the same thing. Cause why? 
we're not all at the same place. To know God, you can't learn about God. God has to reveal himself unto you. And that's the reason that it's, it, it, that it's pointless for you, try to, for you to try to make people see what you see. It's pointless. I get to do it to a certain degree because God gave some pastors, teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the edifying of the body. I'm a gift. This is what I got. I didn't work for it. I didn't. I studied my Bible and said, but you can study all you want to and wouldn't know this. It's a gift from God to the body. I don't have it twisted. It's not for me. And that's the reason that, that, that I, 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 kind of, I fall out with some preachers who are gifts, but then they start using the gift in order to make money. Everything they got. Fred, I'd be with them. I'm like, man. This guy right here got a revelation. This is, man, this right here come from God and everything. And then at the end of you talking about something, send me such and such. God ain't selling nothing. God, God ain't selling nothing. He didn't, what did Jesus tell his disciples? He said, freely you have received. Freely give. If God gave it to you, why I got to buy it from you? He says, the God of this world has blinded their minds. The mind. He done blinded your mind. You ever dealt with anybody whose mind was blind? Huh? Let me give you a good example. They ain't had to lock me up for but one time. Oh, I was bad. Mm. I don't want to hear nothing my mama had to say. I'm bad. Turn the turn the uh, heat up just a little, turn it up just a little bit, Jack Cole. Um, yeah, they had locked me up one time. So see, when they locked me up that time, I done the best I could ever since then. From them not having to to to, to close that door on me. That's that's a hard sound, boy. When you're on the other side of it and everything. And even when I go visit people in, church, in, in jail now, I'm a lawyer, I visit folks in jail, I have a funny feeling in. I, I, I do. I don't, I don't been in there, Fred, down in Pulaski County Jail down there, where you got to hit the thing and don't look like they're coming. I start panicking. <laughs> let, let me up out of here. But watch this, watch this, watch this. They got people that go back over. Ooh, you got loved ones. Just get out. You be so happy. June, June, I got out of jail and whatever. You buy some new sandals and buy them some white pants and everything. And, and you don't find them a job and, and all that. Next thing you know, they don't, call, they don't stop them with some dope. Amen. He said, the God of this world, the little G, have blinded the minds. Why would he blind the minds of them which believe not? Now, this ought to help some of y'all that you get so excited about what you hear here that you want to go and share it with your loved one. This ought to help you. If their mind's been blinded, yeah. you ain't doing nothing but frustrating yourself. They got to see it just like you saw it. You can't force this on nobody. We ain't none of Jehovah's Witnesses. We're not going up and down the road, knocking on folk doors, trying to get them to see. It's God did. <sighs> and let me tell you something. Anything worth having, you ain't got to force it on nobody. Yeah. They'll break in and steal it. He said, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves. But Christ Jesus, the Lord, and ourselves, your servant, for Jesus' sakes. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, have shined in our hearts. You ever said this right here, Mother Bland? I just didn't know. I've said it, haven't you said? I've said it many times over here. Stuff that, you know, God has taught us. I just, I, I just didn't know. I just did. But God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness. 
to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. We got two minutes. Let's go over there to the scripture that, that uh, my Bible scholar found. Jackie. Galatians 2. <laughs> you are. Galatians 2, 16. You got it? I know I want to start at 16. There the Bible says, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. You ain't justified. You ain't nobody going to heaven because they live right. Yeah. They get you thrown out of some churches. No wonder I don't get asked to preach no well. <laughs> say that, say that and see what, what it, he say, he say you live any kind of way you want to. He's sending them people to hell. No, I'm preaching the Bible. Let God be true and let every man be a lie. And I know how to do without Lady Deborah. I can eat peanut butter. I ain't got to have steak. That's what they do in order to control you. They tell you what they can give you. I don't need nothing that you got. I was blessed to have a good mom and a good dad who took care of me. And they made sure. You know, we might not have what everybody else. We was eating out the garden and all this kind of stuff. That We didn't have this and that. But I didn't have to go big. And so now when you don't need what folk got to offer, then, then you can go ahead and believe the Lord. And the Bible said, ain't nobody justified by the works of the law. The Bible said it, 16. Give me this one minute. But by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified. I caught a ride with him. I, I, I just believe that he on his way to being just to, to being. Uh, justified and, and reconciled with God. So I caught a ride with him. Not, not with Sun Young Moon, not with Allah or nothing. I caught a ride with Christ Jesus. I'm in love with Jesus. Jesus is the one. Ain't no, you can't tell me nothing about talking about that white man done brainwash y'all and, and Jesus is just, no, no. Uh-uh. Can, can't nobody tell y'all three that that man car won't get over here and everything because you got on it and he brought you the way you were going. Well, one day I caught a ride with Jesus, and Jesus took me from where I was to where I am. It's much better over here. I'm on the right side now. But until I caught a ride with Jesus, who sent the, I was lost. But I, but I once was lost, but now I'm fine. I see now. He says, um, and not, but if while we seek to be justified with Christ, we ourselves are found to be sinners. Therefore, Christ the minister of sin, God forbid. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. If I go back to trying to be justified by myself, I make myself a transgressor. For I through the law am dead to the law that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ by faith. When I put my faith in him, then whatever he got, I got. He got crucified, I got crucified. He got put in the grave, I got put in the grave. But praise be unto God, when God quickened him, he quickened me together with him. So now I sit in heavenly places with him. Clap your hands with the Lord. Yeah.